This is Mike Franklin, the property tax guy, and today we're going to audit the um, well, the town of Cape Vincent. Uh, but but the decision of uh, William F. Ramps here, he was the state small claims assessment review hearing officer, and um, this is October 27th, 2022, and on November 8th, you'll have an opportunity to vote for Mr. Ramps here for state supreme court. Uh, in the 5th Judicial District of New York. He's from Watertown, New York, and um, and he's he's running for state Supreme Court. Now, um, I will start right off by suggesting that I do not um, endorse Mr. Ramps here for state Supreme Court. Um, frankly, uh, he has a variety of issues. I'm going to try to be as fair as possible. Obviously, I have some issues with Mr. Ramps here, and um, but I'm going to be try to I'm going to try to be fair. And I'm going to review the decision he had on a case that I represented a client on and um, and just review the particulars of it. I have it here in front of you. And um, and so what he did is he dismissed our petition. And, um, and uh, well, without prejudice, which means what he's saying is, is that he doesn't have jurisdiction over the matter uh, because it doesn't qualify for small claims assessment review in his opinion. And so uh, our our appeal option, apparently, for a forty thousand dollar property, has to be to state supreme court. Well, that's an issue I have with Mr. Rams here. It's potential, potentially he is um, technically correct, but it doesn't make sense to tie up a state supreme court judge and all of their and and a court and the bailiff and the stenographer and the. Um, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the judge's clerk and the legal secretary. I mean, that would be very expensive for the taxpayers, and it doesn't make any sense. Now, that's not a reflection upon Mr. Ramps here. It's a reflection upon the real property law uh, regarding small claims assessment review. It's absurd that a, uh, a vacant parcel uh, that's $40,000 wouldn't qualify as a small claims matter. It just doesn't make any sense. So Mr. Ramps here is directing us to state, state Supreme Court. And of course, uh, we do that and we'll be before the judge that he's the law clerk for. So that should be interesting. But we're going to appeal one more time to the assessor and the town supervisor um, uh, and um, suggest that you know it just doesn't really make much sense for everybody to be spending their time and money going to Supreme Court on a forty thousand dollar assessment matter, when the assessor when the assessor could make a common sense adjustment, um, that actually Mr. Ramps here calls for in his decision uh, to his credit. So, an issue that I have. We'll start off with the first paragraph, where Mr. Ramps here indicates that that I had requested the ability to record the hearing. He he uh, he refused to. Uh, he denied my request. Uh, I appealed that request, and then he agreed to allow me to audio record it. Well, uh, when you auto record it, you can't get a feel for what's going on in the hearing. For example, there are three police officers behind me. Mr. Uh, Rams here is utilizing the um, uh, armed security for a, an assessment hearing. Now, I've participated in well over 150 small claims assessment review hearings, and as, there has never been a police officer in an assessment hearing before. And um, and nor has one been in the courtroom, tying up a courtroom, tying up the court security for an assessment matter. It's ridiculous. So so Mr. Mr. Ramps here is not a good steward of the taxpayer's money um, as far as how the uh, the security. But he's also not a good st steward of the taxpayer's money because he referred this to state Supreme Court. It's absolutely ridiculous, although technically he may be correct. But the problem is, is that. Um, it is um, common practice for hearing officers to send a letter to the parties scheduling the hearing and to let them know that they are to, if they have any submissions, they have to submit them a week in advance and provide a copy to the opposing party. And um, and that wasn't done. The the the, the uh, Mr. Rams here allowed the assessor to introduce evidence at the hearing uh, without having us have an opportunity to review it so we can compare apples and apples and address her concerns. And that's exactly what, what transpired. 
um, the, the hearing officer allowed the assessor to introduce that evidence that, that she shouldn't be introducing any evidence that wasn't introduced uh, at SCAR. I'm sorry, at the Board of Assessment Review. But he allowed it. And um, she claimed that according to the town, the, the, the property uh, was a buildable lot. And, um, and buildable lots do not qualify for SCAR. They should qualify for SCAR, but they don't. Now, our, our contention was it was not a buildable lot because it had Indian burial grounds on the property. Well, they're saying, and, and that it didn't have enough frontage after the burial grounds to build. Now, it's on, it's on Carlton Island, and on Carlton Island, all the properties are on the waterfront. There are no properties at the center of the, pro, of the, of the island because it doesn't make sense. Why would you go all the way out there to build a non-waterfront you know, um, you know, home? But also, there's an easement for road, um, for you know ATV paths throughout the island. So if you build in the middle, you're going to have ATVs bombing by you all the time. So uh, I suppose technically they are correct. You could build out there, um, but it's never been done, and it doesn't make much sense. And if you tried to do it, it would create an absolute uproar. So Mr. Ramps here is one for technicalities, and um, and technically, I'd say he's correct. Um, it does not qualify for SCAR. And, um, and so he dismissed the case. And, um, but I, I suggest, um, you know, you know, when you're a judge, you, you have to you weigh the evidence and make a determination between, um, uh, you know, the law and also what's right. And sometimes you have to make judgments. And so, Mr. Ramps here is, wants to run for state Supreme Court, so he's going to go with the technicalities of the law. Uh, he doesn't care if it costs the taxpayers money. He doesn't care to have you know, that it costs taxpayers money to have you know uh, three armed guards in an assessment hearing. He doesn't care you know that it'll waste the assessor's time. He doesn't care that it'll um, cost the town money on attorney's fees to go to state Supreme Court or the taxpayer. He doesn't care about any of that. What he cares about is getting elected as a state Supreme Court judge so he can make $230,000 a year, you know, with, you know, with this, you know, you know, uh, you know, cakewalk of a job, um, the pension, the benefits, you know, you know, he was already triple dipping to begin with as a law clerk, as a town judge and as a hearing officer, creating all kinds of conflicts of interest. But now he wants to be a state Supreme Court judge and, um, and I don't, I don't think it's appropriate. So let's go on and review his decision some more. He talks about um, um, that uh, he doesn't allow recording because of um, the request that was denied pursuant to Section 131.1c of the Rules of the Chief Administrator. Well, um, the, the Section 131.1c says a lot of things. But it doesn't say you can't record uh, um, these hearings. You you, uh, you know you can deny recording the hearings if there's some sort of conflict with somebody else's right. But I have a First Amendment right to to record these things, unless it's interfering with the rights of other people. And the assessor has no um, expectation of privacy, and nor does the hearing officer. What are those people hiding? Is is the issue? The public needs to know what goes on in these hearings. The public needs to know how the assessor conducts business. The public needs to know how this hearing officer conducts business. And the public needs to know the particulars of what goes on in these cases to make certain that they're being treated fairly, that other people aren't being underassessed, um, and that, that, that they're paying the, um, the burden. But he, he, he doesn't want to record. He doesn't want to record it. So he says, Section 131.1c, the rules of the administrator. Well, you know... It's that's not what 131.1c says, and you know we'll I'll get into um, I'll do a separate video on 131, uh, you know, of the uh, rules for video recording on a, on a different on a different video. Uh, but basically, what that sentence says, let me read it again. This request was denied pursuant to Section 131c of the rules of the administrative uh, of the administrator. Well, what does that mean? It means. Uh, the request was denied because I said so. It's so because William Ramser said so, but it provides no logical explanation whatsoever. It's so because he said so. 
131, uh, the section of, the, of that um, administrative uh, rules of the chief administrator, says nothing of the sort. and Because um, obviously, if that's true, no hearing could be recorded. And, and we all know that that's not true. Uh, ask Johnny Depp. He knows all about it. But, um, but uh, so yes, it can be recorded, and it needs to be recorded. To to for the for that hearing officer to avoid the appearance of impropriety, and let me tell you something, there's a lot of impropriety here, um, you know, going on. The assessor isn't doing her job. Uh, you know, she dropped that issue as far as the um, uh, it being a, a buildable lot at the very last minute, so we didn't have an opportunity to respond. She should have told that to us before, and we wouldn't have had to have the hearing and tie up. The the the, um, the court security and the hearing officer and me and the assessor we wouldn't have even had to have had this hearing if we could agree upon that. It's um, you know, it it, it was a you know, um, she's protecting her fiefdom. She's she's just you know coming up with uh, she's reverse engineering an argument, uh, you know, to you know support, uh, you know, that she was you know that she was wrong. Um, but anyway, um, uh, but the last sentence is kind of interesting. Um, he says, as a side note, it appears, and the respondent agrees, the respondent is the assessor, that the sale to the petitioner, which is my client, the property owner, was arm's length and was not unusual in any way. While this property does not qualify for SCAR, it appears that the recent purchase price of forty thousand dollars is the best indicator to value of market of market value, and that's what our argument was. The assessment should be forty thousand dollars, because that's fair market value. That's what we paid for it. That's what the client paid for it. Um, assessments. The purpose of assessment is to get fair market value. We know what fair market value is. It's what the client paid for it, and and the assessor has you know this is the only property of its kind. And so how can the assessor come up with another figure? She just pulls it out of thin air. Initially, she had the assessor like $230-some thousand dollars. And then we got her to bring it down to $72,088. But we paid $40,000 for it. It needs to be $40,000. And the, uh, even William Ref Ramsier agrees with that. And, um, but, you know, because she says it's a buildable lot... Uh, it doesn't qualify for SCAR. Uh, you know, from from my client's perspective, it's great because we have a, a state hearing officer just confirmed that it's a buildable lot. So we shouldn't have any trouble when if he goes to build on it, you know, some someday, you know, um, uh, he had no plans to build on it. But um, but uh, but it's nice that the uh, the hearing officer, a potential state Supreme Court judge to be, uh, determined that it is, in fact, a buildable lot. Um so, I don't know. Um, uh, but anyway, so we asked the assessor and the board and the supervisor to um, to uh, read what the hearing officer said and um, you know uh, apply some common sense and put the assessment to what it is that we ask for because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't right. We wouldn't be wasting all of our time with this stuff. But anyway, um, that so that's William Rams here. Um, you know the technicality of his decision. Um, you know, I guess, you know, in retrospect, I, I, you know, it's, uh, they're saying it's a buildable lot and the law says buildable lots don't qualify for SCAR. I can't disagree with that. But the problem is he allowed the assessor to introduce evidence that was, should have been introduced before. And if it had been introduced, <clears throat> excuse me, before we wouldn't have had to have this hearing and waste everybody's time and money. So that's the error that the hearing officer made in this particular case. It's not so much the decision. He should never have had to write a decision. He should never have wasted the the, the, the court's time, the, 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 the security's time, his time, my time, the taxpayer's time, the assessor's time, the town clerk's time. Everybody's time was wasted because this hearing officer, William F. Ramsier, did not handle this case properly. And uh, But we do appreciate him uh, giving us the indication of what the value should be so that when we go to state Supreme Court... We can give it to his judge, whom he works for, and hopefully he'll do the right thing and um, and set this assessment straight. But guess what we're going to have to do? My client's going to have to file in state Supreme Court, 
and pay the filing fees and waste the court's time, waste everybody's time, when the assessor could just click her mouse and fix this problem. But she won't do it because, you know, that's what they do. So it's not their money. They don't care. So it's just the taxpayer's money, and um, and so it's of no consequence. No consequence to William Ramser. It's no consequence to um, to the uh, assessor of Cape Vincent. So uh, I don't know what more there is to say about it. Um, you know, we'll get to the bottom of it. But uh, again, uh, I'm trying to be fair, but uh, Mr. Ramser, I uh, consider to be disingenuous and um and uh frankly i don't find him to be trustworthy uh, i don't care if he's a republican or a democrat it makes no difference to me i just think that um i just don't think that he has the moral fiber to be a state supreme court judge um this is mike franklin the property tax guy